Well, hello and welcome to Mystic Brew. I am Radagast. And um, so my Mystic Brews have been a little slow of late. Um, a lot is owing to the fact that in addition to doing working with Uncle Butchie, I decided I made a commitment to fill in for another bass player for a gig that they had coming up. And um, so besides learning the set list, I'm also doing my best to emulate the bass player who I'm um, filling in for and um, so it's just it's been demanding because um, I, I, there's just been you know a good learning curve and then really learning it correctly so that's left me a little bit uh, pretty I, I, I get home and I'm just like I'm, I'm, I'm over related so I haven't been putting out as many mystic brews but uh, also um, Cosmic Emporium with uh, with Geo, when he saw that I needed some time out, he just he's just I guess he's waiting for me to give him a signal again, and then um, one of the people who was really becoming very a big part of Voices of the Forum has also ha had to different people moving, so that hasn't happened. So those things that normally go up almost usually on a, almost a weekly basis on my channel haven't been going up, so my channel has looked very slow lately. Um, that might be why I've lost 10 or more subscribers. Um, but I'm, you know, just uh, have to stay within my flow um, and not just get in front of a camera and, uh, and yak away. Um, and so, anyway, let me see what I wrote for myself here. Um, okay, so I spoke. Oh, yeah, so, so, um, so the Mystic and the Moose. I'm um, just some feedback I'm going to talk about from my uh, two things I've done recently. One is Mystic and the Moose, and the other is the Uncle Butchie song that I have put in one of my Mystic Brews. And um, with regard to Mystic and the Moose, people who I speak to who have watched the show seem to really enjoy the conversations. So I just, I really, uh, and I'm enjoying them. And I think it's good content. I think it's, I think it's good content for these times, even if it isn't apparent that it's good content. Um, and then the other thing, the Uncle Butchie thing, people, you know, said, oh, we're devoked to sounds of, um, you know, Scottish, Celtic, um, uh, bluegrass, and whatever. And um, and I just was glad to hear different things thrown out because we don't play a genre. We just play music. Although some of the songs, um, the next song I will engineer, because from now, um, it's two weeks ago now that I made a recording. We tried to make a recording this past week and I ran into a lot of technical difficulties even got to the point where for some reason it would not record um, so I have no idea what we even captured I have to go uh, get techie on that and that's the other thing now that I'm getting involved with more things and trying to get recordings and stuff then they, they, you know, you're using equipment and if you haven't used it in a while and you forget how to use it you have to learn how to use it and if you screwed up you have to figure out how to pull out so I've just been involved in a lot of real life stuff um, but that's um, that sometimes does not bode well for me getting Mystic Brews out. So I apologize for being a little bit slower lately um, and the channel being a little quieter. Um, so I just really I got very good feedback on the Uncle Butchie stuff. And the next, so the next one that out of that rehearsal is actually I think a, a kind of a, an old fiddle tune or something that we play. Um, and um, I thought it came out real good. So I have, but I have to clean that up. Um, the, by the time I did Uncle Butchie, I had um, put three layers of effects on it to make it sound um, somewhat, somewhat unra unraw. Um, but so that's that. So that's Uncle Butchie. Um, and then the other reason is, you know, for a while there, for a couple of months, I was I was um, giving some political commentary of sorts within. I considered it kind of. Um, geopolitical commentary um, but when you but geopolitical political commentary involves namings heads of states and um, there's just a lot of emotional energy around heads of states these days um, a lot of it propagated by the media picking certain heads of states and then just pasting them with uh, bad advertisement um, so I got I just decided to stay away from anything that has like a, a divide on it um, especially regarding on things 
something that to me is 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 I just see it as completely a, a fake system, and part of it is kind of like let's 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 say we all decided we understood that one of the, one of the main ways we could make a difference was to have three phone numbers or emails, and that would be our two senators and whatever congressman represented our district, and um, and let them know exactly what we wanted to, how we want to see them perform, and the beauty of that as a concept and as part of the set, how the system is, can be set up and be of the people is that you don't even have to vote. I mean, a, when somebody goes to Senate, if they're your senator, they're your senator whether you voted for them or whether you voted at all. So, you know, the, it, at many point, it almost doesn't even matter who gets sent there. You know, you know they're getting sent into a, a criminal organization. So the best thing you can hope to do at all is hold people accountable by saying we're watching what you're doing and this is what we would like to you know see done and now we're on record and um and all your secretaries know it and um i mean not that i'm expecting to see that anytime soon but it's built into the system and when you realize that basically you can hold anybody who steps into washington accountable just by being in their district or in their state means you don't even have to pick political parties the, you know you can't just they're either a functionary of the will of the people or they're not and they can't function just as a democrat or a republican so again that's a whole divide and, and and conquer strategy the whole politics and i want to stay as far away from it as possible and um and i've found you know with the conversations with moose we go into places and there, there's a conversation that happens above that stuff and the and the conversation that's above the pol the po political stuff is actually where the the meat is, is actually what meat <laughs> is actually where the uh, where we, we want to I think where I think we're better served placing our focus. Um, and and you need politics is is there's no clean way of of dragging through politics and staying coherent. And staying you know, on point, politics is made to pull you off point by having all this other baggage to the central point, and we and we can we can kind of blow that conditioning off pretty quickly once we just go oh yeah, and then when you start and then you start listening to you know to to mass media where they do operate at that level and you start to really feel uh, assaulted in somebody trying to adjust your head and and look only in one direction and 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 uh entertain only one small stream of considerations of of things to consider um on on the world stage even so um i'm just uh, you know that's why i'm not doing much about politics so that kind of always leaves me having to take the high road now one of the things i was have spoken of and have been working on is this kind of um, thing based on bringing us back to our roots, which I believe is Mother Earth, um, the mythos and this, or the story, the narrative that goes with that, introducing that into some of its entirety, but also connecting in um, one is a connection into that narrative that often doesn't get made, which I think has to take place, which is the Anunnaki. So I'm looking at the different tie-ins into that the Sophianic narrative from that because I think there's legitimate tie-ins um, and um, and part of that comes a big part of that comes from Anton Parks and not Zechariah Sitchin completely different source um, very much more in depth um, a skilled linguist um, somebody who kind of got psychically in, um, involved with it for a while um, and so it's it's pretty rich information so there's some real tie-ins there and then again when uh, another fellow human uh, J.R.R. Tolkien bringing through his creation myth of the Silmarillion and besides its poetry and and, and it's very healthy feeling to it, it in many ways it, it's in the Sophianic narrative told almost in another way and where the kind of originator in in the Sophianic narrative is called uh, Eru Iluvatar in um, the Tolkien 
narrative of the Silmarillion, and the Ainu Lindale is that part of the of the um, of the Silmarillion, and that refers to the Ainu or the Ainur, who are the A and this, uh, who are the beings with Iluvatar, um, the, his emanations, and um, so the Ainu Lindale is kind of means the singing of the Ainur. Um, and the, just the similarity and how he and but what's beautiful about it is he he brings some character to the to in his narrative to Iluvatar just very much like there's a character narrative of Jehovah in in the Abrahamic texts and he and he he inserts a certain I don't know if the word scrutiny is good, but it's almost as if like there's always something else up his sleeve. And he and Tolkien actually uses the phrase that um, Iluvatar kept certain things hidden from the Ainur. Um, and I, d I felt that the word hidden was unnecessary. I felt that basically that there were certain thoughts again because this is really one big these are all the emanations so these are actually the thoughts of Iluvatar or the Pleroma or the originator but what I like in Tolkien's writing is how that although this these aeons or Ainur are, ex, are externalizations of the eternal one that the eternal one has not only still all of that in one package but and because of that there's some more and um, and so with there's almost like a wink of the eye from Tolkien about Iluvatar, v extremely benevolent and and, and wise, um, being a, like being in the same game as everybody else, but kind of popping in and out when you, when you might not expect it. And there's a certain kind of um, playfulness from the originator um, that I like, and I also think. When I kind of ponder the Sophianic narrative, and some of the places where uh, I just feel there's something else that's dancing in the narrative when I take Tolkien's perspective, and some of his kind of almost insight into the playfulness um, of the originator, uh, it 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 becomes fun. And and again, these two stories blend together beautifully. The Anunnaki just fit into the Sophianic story because they look somebody like them whether they're from another planet or not is another story but over these whoever these different beings were um were you know on the earth so that makes them part of earth history so any part of earth history to me has to uh, work its way into the sophianic narrative because that's what the hist earth history is it's a sophianic narrative so anyway, what I'm probably going to do uh, with connection to um, trying to get some of this material out, I'm realizing I'm going to, I want to almost put it as if I'm going to give a talk or a seminar, as if, you know, I was going to give a talk on, uh, you know, Paradigm Disruption, which was the name of my very first video. And it was called Gaia, Sophia is Our God. And, um, but again, expanding into these other territories, and part of it, because I think it brings, first of all, it brings playfulness. And f from my mystic experience with what we're working with as, you know, in our divine connection, it's very playful, um, despite the seriousness of it all. Um, it just, you know, all that dourness is, well, there's a, there's a, <laughs> Certain amount of that dourness poured through a certain portal, but that's not uh, that's not the show. Um, but there's a you know there's a certain dourness that gets ins inserted now by humanity into um, all th in things into things divine, as opposed to that loving playfulness and um, um, getting you getting you to dig in and be creative and 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 do the right thing in that creative way. But there. Uh, the currents play with you as you create your own currents. Having a, I had actually we got into a little conversation about um, 
sigils with certain people, with a few people, and I was just saying about the magician will put up a sigil, and of course the sigil is made to kind of catch the Tao a certain way and create a, an effect that the person who uh, puts the sigil in place is looking to um, create. And um, But the fact is, there are certain currents that you do create, but after those, before those currents disappear, they get played with. Um, and and again, and not and not in a malevolent way. They're again, they they're there to be played with. They will be played with. And um, even the most, uh, you know, t you just never know. There's, we were. I was speaking a little bit cautionary on on ma on magic. In gen you know, again, a big. I'm a big proponent of living magically and considering ourselves magical people. The practice of magic is another another story, um, and it it's a complicated subject. Um, but it, um, it's, it's one that's um, meant, it's, it's a very responsible conversation. But it's because it's kind of like, nah, I won't even go there. So anyway, so I'm going to try to assemble um, these, these things almost like an hour-long talks. And, um, and in that sense, rather than just do my normal narrative style, I want to like try to find questions that somebody might ask if I were giving us a talk and then answered the question as part of the presentation. So it's going to take a little, because I've never done this before. Um, I've, whenever I've done any talks, I've spoken live, so I have that interplay. I don't have to try and anticipate it, so then give a delivery that um, might be more satisfying. So that's what's on my mind. And um, so any feedback, um, um, again, Uncle Butchie feedback, we'll just wait till I put the next one up. But I'll probably, I'll probably put the two of them together. And I'll probably put them up on a separate video. That way it's kind of like a little bit of a collection. Would like to get some f appropriate photos to go along with it, but i certainly not going to add that to my list of things to do before I, I uh, re-engineer or engineer that piece. And um, I think that'll be it for now. I'm glad I was able to pull together a, a coherent enough show um, to get up. And um, But I would like to hear about how you feel about the mystic and the moose and having that as you know something that I I put up regularly. Right now we've been planning bi-monthly. Um, that seems like a, a pretty good frequency. Certainly guarantees that we'll have something to talk about. Um, but you know, just get. I would appreciate any feedback on that. Um, I know the shows are going over well, but just you know, um, is it? Are we hitting the right spot, especially at that bi-monthly thing? And I hope we are. And uh, so anyway, take care of yourselves. Bring lots of, bring that nice, <laughs> beautiful heart energy up. I tend to use a really beautiful shade of green. Um, to, uh, because that's what I get the best results out of my heart chakra. Sometimes some gold will, uh, uh, show up on its own, and I usually feel that's a, con a, con a contribution, um, that goes well with the very rich green that I use. Um, stay sane. Don't try not realize this is a time, or it has been a time, who knows? We're now post solstice. But it has been the time um, where there's just a lot of distractions. Um, and, th and they're presented, in, a lot of these distractions are presented in a way to engage us emotionally. I just want us all to be on guard that m on multiple fronts, uh, there are people who. Will, who aware that we are in many levels of media and so there'll be a presence and so just be aware of kind of like emotional jerking um, and just take a look at it it doesn't mean no any emotional jerking means I need to ignore it no but just be beware of that as a tactic all right and so stay sane I love you all and um, it's been good talking to you see you next time